BB, you've been doing the work, huh? Wow, this album is a revelation. And by that, I mean a revelation to yourself and then us and not the other way around, which is often the case. Often the music gets made, reveals itself to us. And then later on you go, oh, huh, it meant something to me, the artist, but you got it the right way around. You went through it making this, huh? Yeah, I definitely had to go through it. You know, sometimes you go around things. Uh, this this was definitely a, uh, I, can't, I can't even find the word, like, like, I guess I had a revelation on this album and, I, and it was, I went through some dark times, but I'm feeling so much, it was very therapeutic for me. Yeah, I can imagine. And listening to it, it's therapeutic for the listener as well, because it, it strikes a lot of chords that, that, that make, that, that really are very human. Um, the idea of being comfortable within one's own identity and not within the manifestation even harder when you're trying to figure out who you are but you've also presented an image and allowed us sort of try to figure out who you are for me it's kind of been like this you know you know in life when you go through things and i, I kind of have this love-hate relationship with myself where i'm constantly trying to like accept myself and who i am and the stuff that i go through and the, the battles that i have within myself and my mental health and like a, a, a like um accepting myself or thinking i'm good enough for things um and 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 um accepting my past and things that have happened to me that have affected the way that i view myself and the world around me and um you know i th it, it's i think with this album I'm kind of like you know with break my heart myself or empty or sabotage i think those were records where i could finally like um heal a bit and accept my like, this is just who I am, but not in a, not like in a, in a reflecting way, not in like a victimizing way. Cause I feel like I've done that in the past. And now I feel like I've come to the point where I'm like, this is just who I am. Like, that's what's so rewarding about it is that it, it is kind of a very strong record, even though you're identifying a lot of areas in your life that you want to practice, you know, you want to figure out it's, it's got a lot of strength in it. Like your voice sounds strong. The music is powerful. Was that important to you that when you listen back to it as a body of work, that it was there was power in this album? Well, I'm very dramatic. I like dramatic sound and like I love like good like I love like dramatic vocals and melodies and guitars and pianos and I think it happened naturally. Um, it happened naturally. Uh, for me, it's more about the feeling. And there's some things that I'm just drawn to. Um, I'm just drawn to way more than others. And I like just big sounding things. One of the first impressions I got from you was hearing you on our very own radio station talking about Lauren Hill. And it was one of my favorite moments at the time because you were so passionate. You were such a fan. You were so eloquent the way you talked about her. And it was just so open. It was brilliant. And I know you that, that she just, she, she kind of is, I think she, from what I got from you, she's a, a huge part of what has motivated you to want to write and express yourself, right? I'm obsessed with her writing and her music and like she says, and I don't know, I just like loved how frank she was with her, with her songs and like how she talked about like, you know, um, like sex and guys wanting things from girls like it just she spoke about real things which i really loved about how people want to just use each other which i feel like a lot of women never really talk about but she talked about everything in a very insightful way and then when she spoke about her son and and the industry telling her she couldn't have her son she just talked about things that i, I feel like a lot of people didn't really speak about and that I, that's what i really respect about her the same reason why i expect i respect alanis morissette and her songwriting you know she's talking about in the movie theater it's so shocking at first and you just like you, i remember being like in the 90s when i heard that on the radio and i was just like wait what just what just happened and it was such a huge moment and i i remember interviewing her around that time and she was so dialed in like her conversation was so engaging and smart and then someone told me later on you know she's younger than you and i just i couldn't get my head around the fact i thought she was like five years older than me she was so smart and, you know, she's, Alanis is amazing. Lauren is amazing. But these are artists who, if you put them both side by side, made these incredible bodies of work. And then in their own way, sort of withdrew over time and kind of recaptured some essence in different ways with different challenges, recaptured some essence of what it is to not be who we see at those pivotal moments. Something about it, right? Just the power of those records. I was angry for the longest time because I'm like, I want another 
album from Lauren Hill. I want another miseducation of Lauren Hill. Like, why? It's hard being a fan sometimes. Can, you become selfish. I feel like she just said what she needed to say. And artistry, I feel like we put so much pressure on artists of like having to constantly stay relevant. But to me, I I envy her and like, but I'm inspired by her because she was able to put together one album that was so focused. We just played Benny, fellow New Zealander. She's awesome. Why did you pick Benny? I, yeah, I, I think I only put like one new artist on there. I could put more if you want, but um, I love, I just love her voice and I love this song because I've thought those things. I know that's really dramatic, but I've been literally obsessed with this song. I play it every day. I play it every photo shoot. I probably play it like 10, 15 times a day. Um, I just like the fact that these are things that I've been think I've thought in my life at one point. Like, I hope I don't die in my sleep. I hope I don't die in this plane. And I just like never really have heard a song like that. And the fact that she's able to, I don't know, I just think as an artist, she's really talented. The fa Her melody, voice. Um, and it's so funny that she's talking about ways that she could die and she's scared, but it sounds so, the song sounds so lovely. She's got a really cool, askew view. Like, it's like, she sees the same things as everybody else, but she sees a little bit of skew left or right, so she can kind of get inside the subject in a different way. And those kind of writers, I love those kind of writers. You know, I love your writing. You know, you you are one of the, the best writers around right now, and the stats prove it. Um, you talked a little bit about getting yourself into a place where I guess your subconscious kicks in because the anxiety is, is there to try to prevent you from actually doing your job. What does it feel like when you know a song is available to you? And you may not have expected it, but it's, but you've got to you've got to heed the call. Like uh, ultimate um, Nirvana, like the best high in the world. Like you know when you like when you have a couple. I mean I don't know if you drink, but when you have a couple of glasses of wine, or you're like, or you're having some tequila, and you the best night of your life that you ever went out with your friends right before you got super drunk. That like that like buzzed feeling of like ah. Right. You know a song that I didn't put on the playlist that I wish I would have put on the playlist too? That Just put it on that right now. Just put it on right now. What do you want? Ray of Light by Madonna. Oh, yeah, man. That's epic. That record is unbelievable. Because you know, I, I really love that song. I've been in the studio where I try to use that as an inspiration, but it's really hard because to me, that song, my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time as well, the fact that it kind of has like that all guitar, that guitar when it comes in, and then when the experimental sounds, the and then like the and then the drums are super experimental and then when she goes sorry i get excited when i with that. and then when she goes um um and i feel like i just got it it's my favorite madonna song really that song is incredible like i think the the artistry the, the musicianship in that song is phenomenal like that it's all of madonna that i've loved over the years here and there and doing it and everything that's coming together in this one moment it's like a little bit of like the angstiness with like the dance but then the experiments well, we love her for trying different things but i forgot to put that on my album but on the sorry on the playlist but like one of my favorite songs ever as well. I had to add that in there. I'm sorry, because that the system of a down, I know it's weird, it's a different song and different artist, but it kind of gives me that same feel when I listen to it. You know, there's one thing that sort of, there's some real bangers on this playlist. And I mean, that Ty Dolla Sign Spicy record post is like an underrated classic. It's a modern classic. I love that record. Same, I'm like, what's going on, right? Like, I was like, that should be bigger. I just love those melodies. Who wanna, who wanna go? And also Ty Dolla Sign in, in general though, like, I'll say this, like, I believe he, just being in the studio with him and being in the studio with a lot of big writers and a lot of artists, like, he truly wows me. Like, I'm just like, how, where, what does it come from? Like, what are you connected to? Like, what planet? He is, to me, obviously respected in the industry, but so underrated. And I'm like, who, like, who do I need to speak to? Because I'm like, this is not, you know, like, I know we respect him. He's incredible. But I'm like, people don't really know how much he has written for other people, what he has really done, his songs, his songwriting, his melodies. I'm like, yeah, that song needs to blow up way bigger, spicy. I'm sorry. It's incredible. But don't you think that you and him have that in common to some degree and that you both are very successful and yet both of you sort of, to your point earlier on, feel like there's, there's this unresolved recognition. But I don't know if Ty... I think Ty's okay. I mean, every time I speak to Ty, he's like, seems to be living a great existence. His girl and him are going wine tasting, and he's like, you want to come wine tasting with us? I'm like, 
okay, I'll go, to, I'll go wine tasting with Tyler Hassan. That's interesting. Let's do it. There's a theme that has been flowing through this, aside from quality music, BB. And as we come to the end of this playlist, um, you know, you finished with Radiohead Creep. Was there a particular order here of why you put things where they were? I'm gonna be honest. I just, I just was, you know, I was like, they were like, you gotta pick your all time favorites. I was like, all time favorites. Like, this is painful. Uh, that one goes to the end for a reason because it's the encore tune. If you're lucky enough to hear them play it, which is rare these days, but that song, nobody actually, I think, summed up in the '90s. And everyone put this crown on on Nirvana on Kurt Cobain, right? But I think t Tom York was really in in the deep in the 90s and this song creep is is the anthem for a total lack of self-fulfillment <laughs> so dark it's so depressing but i find a, a comfort in songs like in these lyrics i wish i had a beautiful soul it kind of comes from this place of like not loving yourself which i kind of relate to and i think i think i have I don't know with music, you know, I, was, I feel like a lot of people, are, you know, in my squad, like, you know, they love me and they don't judge me. But a lot of times, like even with my mother, she's like, why can't you just write happy songs? Just write happy, like be like the other girls, you know, that are in your group putting out music. No, but she just wants to, she doesn't want to think that I'm like, you know, she's a child or she didn't do a good job. It comes from that, the insecurity of that. To me, these songs are not dark and sad. They're insightful and they're honest. And that in my songwriting, that's what I love. And that's what I think when I try to make songs and put songs out, and I do all the time because I, I, I'm run by fear a lot of times and overthinking, like you said, I always win for me. And what I feel like my fans love is the records like I'm a mess where it's like, I'm really being honest and it, it, there's a real and there's a, I don't know, I just find comfort in that. And I find honesty and truth in that. And when I listen to Creep, I can feel the pain. And um, yeah, that's where that's where I love. And I, I live and I thrive. It's as long as you can be honest when you're happy too. That's what you don't want to do is become like beholden to this idea of what people expect from you and that by being quote unquote honest. It's like if you're in a good place. You should feel free to write whatever you want. It's so hard for me to write like uh, I can write good play songs, but they'll they'll still be in minor keys. 